Where are you from? South Philadelphia. You know, uh, probably if you're unfamiliar with it, it's uh, it's right, it's right, not far from where uh, Meek Mill. I know, I know, probably my everybody's pretty familiar with Meek Mill. So he's from North South Philadelphia, about like half hour away. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Now, certain part of South Philly you represent? Uh, I grew, my family grew up around Fifth Street, but uh, I was born and raised around, around, I would say like 20th and Snyder, you know what I'm saying? Around that between 20th and 23rd, so yeah. Now, you still currently reside in Philly today? Yes, I do. What was it like for you growing up in Philly? Can you paint that picture for us? Uh, uh, I mean, it wasn't too much to complain about. You know, we went through struggles. Certain stuff to talk about, certain, I mean, certain stuff we ain't gonna talk about, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, pretty much the same shit. Just growing up, playing ball, then ended up jumping off the porch, doing hustling, a, a, lot, a lot of shit going on, you know what I'm saying? When it came to the struggle, what was your bottom point dealing with the struggle? Uh, just seeing my mom struggle. That was the, that's, I say that's the bottom point with me. Just seeing my mom go through shit, hearing certain shit. She going through, you know what I'm saying? And just watching her go through it and take care of three children, you know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to make a change at that point. So it started from there. That's when I started to see myself being creative and finding different things to do. I want to break some of these elements you did describing uh, your upbringing. But first, let's start with your family. Uh, you mentioned your mom here. What happened to dad? Uh, now, my dad was there, you know what I'm saying? He was there. Uh, you know, we, we had little bumps in the road, but... We, we all good, you know what I'm saying? But he was there, just that they weren't together, you know what I'm saying? So that kind of, just, it was just, they were on two different pages. So life with him was different than, than life with her, you know what I'm saying? So. How young were you when your parents separated? About three. Three years old. Yeah. And you end up living with your mom. Yeah. Now, well, I end up, I'll end up going to my grandma's state for probably like two or three years, but I end up going back to my mom's after that. So you might as well say, yeah. Grandma on your mother's side or father's no, side? No, father's side. Okay. Yeah. Um, and why were you living with grandma for a couple of years? Uh, I just, just to give my dad some, I guess, to get some leeway, I guess. I don't know, let him know, like, he can, you, you also can take care of him at the same time, but end up going back to my mom. I was comfortable there. You live with your moms, but father was in the picture throughout yeah, your yeah, life. Yeah. Uh, would you be going back and forth? Was there times where you would just stay with him for a little bit? Yeah, or? yeah. You know, as a kid, sometimes you, 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 your father probably pick you up on a weekend. If you grew up, you know what I'm saying, in a black community, you know how it is, you know what I'm saying? He come pick me up every now and then, but I stay with my mom. Now, um, thinking back hindsight 2020, how did this separation affect you? I mean, it affected me to the point of just to not see them together and just to not have that full, complete family so I can just, I won't be probably be doing the same shit I'm doing now. I'll be thinking different, you know what I mean? So it kind of forced me to a certain environment. I kind of had to do certain shit on my own when my father wasn't around, you know what I'm saying? My mom couldn't teach me everything, but she did a hell of a job, you know what I'm saying? Raising three kids, two boys, she did good. There, there was a phrase you used describing your upbringing when you said you got off the porch, you were hustling. Yeah. So there was a, a, a path you took of street activity at one point in your life. Yeah. I feel like every, I mean, I ain't gonna say every guy do, but I feel like it's a point that you just wanna do better at a point you see other people doing certain stuff and you just like, you know what? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta up my level, you know what I'm saying? You got, I gotta get there, get where they at, you know what I mean? So you start to try different things, you know what I mean? I grew up playing sports, so that's all I knew at one point, but once I start getting around more, I started doing different shit, you know what I'm saying? You know, the environment can sometimes sink you in. Do you feel like the separation may have had anything to do with that? Yeah, to a certain extent, but at the same time, I always had my, other, my, my own life too. I would go to school, I'd do different stuff, I mean, other than being in the house and then having them around me, I feel like, if they were, if like, we was a better picture all together, I feel like, you know what I mean, it would have been better overall. But, you know what I mean, everything happened for a reason. I probably wouldn't be here. How big was gang activity back then in Philly? I mean, I want to say gang activity because it wasn't like, I mean, in Philly it's different. It's kind of like blocks. It ain't really like gang, you know what I'm saying? So we different blocks. But, I mean, same thing as here, everywhere, you know what I'm saying? You can't, really can't call it. It's just like it's everywhere you go, you know what I'm saying? Same thing. Uh, when it came to your upbringing, financially, how would you describe the class you were in? What you mean? Um, was it poverty? Was it lower middle class? Was it middle class? Upper middle class? Rich? 
<laughs> nah, I, would, I don't know. I guess I guess poverty, I guess. You know what I'm saying? We, I stayed with my mom's. My mom's mom, you know what I mean? We all lived in the house together at one point. Like we, I kind of grew up like that because my mom. I said my mom had three kids. You know what I'm saying? She had to take care of. You know what I'm saying? She was neither with neither one of the baby daddy, so it's just like she was kind of working on her own. So she couldn't do everything by herself. So we kind of we like I said we had my father in my life, but at the same time I was staying with my mom. We all were. So you know we. I mean we had difficulties, but we fought through them all together. You know what I'm saying? We had family to help us. So you know what I'm saying? We made it through. Was there a point where? In your during your upbringing, your family was able to rise to another class of of, of finance. Was your uh, was your family I mean, able yeah, to go from I mean, poverty we, to? Yeah, I mean, we we doing a little better. Than, like, yeah, my yeah, my mom doing a little better than she was before. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, you get better at time. You know what I'm saying? But we still ain't where we want to be all the way. You know what I'm saying? But we getting there. I'm getting there. How were you guys able to move up? Doing better in life, you know what I'm saying? Just like she going, she went back to school, got her, she had a, and she a nurse now, so you know what I mean? Like and I'm, I'm working on my music, you know what I'm saying? I'm just we all got different things we doing, but we gonna bring them to the table at one point. Growing up in poverty, um, you mentioned there was a moment where you had to, uh, well, there was a moment where you you went to the uh, street activity route. Uh, before I I touch that subject though. When it came to money, yeah. um, was there a point where you had to chip in? What you mean? Well, as far as my helping my mom? Yeah, with the family. Yeah, it was always somebody. a point. It's, it's still to a point I do it now, you know what I'm saying? So it's, I don't, that ain't going to never change. If my mom need help, I'm there to help her, you know what I mean? So that ain't going to never change. That's still to this day. So, Is that something you take upon yourself and do, or is that something you're asked to do by a family member? I, I think that's just something you got to do. Now, she's not every, not all the time a person's going to say they need help, you know what I'm saying? Especially your mother. She's, she's well, I see it through all, you know what I mean? So I know what's going on. Now, how young did this start, the street activity path? I mean, it's just... What age, maybe? What grade? Teenagers, like 13. 13. Yeah, like around like 13. Started smoking weed, stuff like that. Started to sleep with school, shit like that. You know what I mean? Just yeah, that's when it started to catch up with me, stuff like that. Was there ever a point where you try to get a job? Yeah, I tried to get a job. I tried. It's crazy though. I always try to get a job. I never would get hired, so I just always got discouraged. So it was just like, fuck that shit, man. I ain't got work, man. I'm not getting hired. Like I'm a, I'm better off selling weed, selling whatever I got. You know what I'm saying? Do whatever I gotta do to make some money. Cause I mean, I didn't fly by the Pizza Hut. I was one. I wanted pizza so bad it would not hire me. I was crazy. I won. I applied to so many jobs though, bro. Kicks. I always wanted to work at a sneaker store, Foot Locker. Never would get hired. I was like, fuck this shit, man. I ain't doing this. Why do you think they wouldn't hire you? Was it your age? Was it something else? Cause I'm supposed to be right here. You know what I'm saying? I ain't supposed to be there. There's a reason. Everything happened for a reason. But do they back then? Do they give you a reason why they wouldn't hire you? No, they don't even. Some, if they, nine times they don't want to hire, they ain't gonna call you. Mm. <laughs> You know how that go, so I mean, I wasn't even worried about it at that point. How young were you when you tried to get a job? Uh, around from I would say from fourteen to eighteen, or oh, to fourteen to nineteen. Mm. I guess my question was: is thinking back, do you try to get the job first, or do you start with the street activity and then you try to get the job? I guess I'm. It was in a mix of both, you know what I'm saying? It was in a mix of both, because like, I wanted to still, like, like I said, I always did sports, I always had stuff to keep me focused, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to still do what I want and I wanted to make a little money on the side, you know what I'm saying? But everything don't work at the same time sometimes, so it's just like, damn, which one you gonna do? But I ended up doing both at the same time. Like, when I get some money, I got it, and then when I was doing other stuff, I did it, you know what I'm saying? But, you know. Never stop making money, so it's, it's always gonna be around. It was a friend that put you onto it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean the environment. Yeah, yeah, you can say that, man. It's the environment that put you onto it. You ain't got to necessarily a friend. The environment itself does it. I see. You know what I'm saying? Now, obviously, going that route, the street activity path. Um, looking back, dealing with the streets, that can be a risky path. Yeah, anytime. You don't never know what can happen. Consequences can stem from that. A certain level yeah. of stress. Yeah. The looking over your shoulder feeling. Right. Violence. Yeah. Jail. Worst case, death. Did you experience any of those? 
I didn't, I got, I didn't experience them myself, but I got like family members that's experiencing them. You know what I mean? So I mean, free Breon, one more camera, I'm gonna say that for my nigga Breon. You know what I mean? Did you know this stuff from the jump? What? Some of these things that could happen? Yeah, I mean, you always know your con. You you don't know necessarily every consequence that's gonna happen to you, but you know the consequences of it. You know what I'm saying? So you just kind of just like I'm gonna deal with it how it come. You know what I mean? Because I don't know how it's gonna come to me. So. Was there ever an exit strategy with that stuff for you? Yeah. That's why I'm right here, music. Music was the exit. Yeah, music is my exit. I um, started rapping at a young age. So it kind of was, I was still doing what I was doing, but once, but now I'm like kind of like fully focused, it's, it's, come, it's coming along for me, so. And we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Yeah. But just curious, uh, street activity stuff, any regrets thinking back? Yeah, nobody want to do that. I'll take it back. <laughs> you would? Yeah, i will take it back. You know what I mean? If I had to grow up in a different, you know what I mean? It kind of made me, that's made me the person who I am. That's why I am. I mean, i take that. But at the same time, if I didn't have to live through that, why would I want to go through certain stuff, getting your water cut off, you know what I'm saying? Like, having to move because there's mold in the house. You got to leave your whole house. Like, it's just certain stuff. you just like, well, I don't want to go through that. But, you know what I'm saying? But take it how it come. That's why I'm here, you know what I mean? So, I ain't, I ain't knocking it. Was it worth it? Was the risk worth the reward or what you got out of it? Not all the time, but in the long run, I, uh, it will. Long run, it will. Hide it from your parents? Uh, I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> but you know, they, at the while, they get suspicious on you. They start checking you stuff you're doing, checking your room, just checking everything. You know, you're like, ah. End up getting caught up. I mean, I listen. At the, at a certain point, she's gonna see you start doing stuff, start buying more stuff. You know what I mean? Certain stuff change about you, and she like, I, I see how you moving now. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I pre pretty much every parent know it, kind of. But I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. When she catches it, uh, what was her reaction? <laughs> Get the fuck out of my house with this shit. <laughs> but you know, like I. I mean, it's not it's not acceptable, period, you know what I'm saying? What what you got what you want me to do, you know what I mean? These jobs ain't hiring me. When I'm calling, I'm trying to fill them out. And the ones I was trying to get, it wasn't working out for me. So it was just like, damn, what the fuck you want me to do? Like, I ain't got I ain't got no other option at this point. Cause I ain't the type to be out there shoveling no snow, all that other goofy shit. I don't know how fuck all that. If I'm gonna work, I ain't got no problem working, but they not calling me back, what you want me to do? Now back then, when you were doing it, you were one foot in school, yeah. one foot yeah, with I the would, street activities. Yeah. Um, I know sometimes when kids uh, do both, one yeah. foot in, one foot out, sometimes they get so immersed with the street activity stuff, they end up not finishing high school. They end up dropping out. Right. Uh, was that the case for you or no? Nah, I finished high school, man. And what was your reasoning? <laughs> I mean, it was hard. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna tell you right now. I've been in summer school since I was in fucking eighth grade. So I'm gonna be honest. With you, I'm gonna be honest. I've been in summer school since I was eighth grade because I ain't really. I was like, I always knew how to do the work, but I just didn't never give a fuck about it. So all I cared about what was going on at the time. So it was just like, I was. I ain't give a fuck about it. But I, I made it through, and she was proud of me. At least I got that because I'm gonna be honest. She thought I was going just after so many summer schools. She thought I was just going like fuck it. He's not. But I made it through. You know what I'm saying? Was it your mom pushing you? Was it your mom pushing you, or was it more of a self? No, nah, I was definitely myself and her pushing me, but it was myself because I was like, I'm not gonna let her down like that. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to finish high school, and if I can get to college and graduate, I would do it. Sadly, it didn't work out, but you know what I'm saying. I tried it. You know what I mean for her and for myself. So you tried the college route? Yeah, I tried the college route. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. In regards to um, in regards to the high school stuff though, and graduating. With all these summer schools that you took, did you graduate on time? Did you ever get held back? No, I ain't never get held back. Luckily, I was supposed to get held back, but I ain't never happened. But so, thank God, because I wasn't supposed to be there. But I wasn't doing what I was. Got, I wasn't doing what I had to do. So you know what I mean? Catches up to you. Now, in regards to the struggle, I asked you what your bottom point was, right? And you you gave us an answer. On the opposite end of the spectrum, what was a high point for you uh, during your upbringing? If Say it again. Was one. If, if, you know, when I asked you what your bottom point was with the struggle, yeah. you gave us an answer. But yeah. on the opposite end of that spectrum, what was the high point for you in your life growing up? The high point? Yeah. 
Uh, growing up. What do you mean by like just like just doing stuff I like? You know what I'm saying? Stuff like no, that. No, just a high point in your life, a positive moment in your life. Oh, a positive moment. Yeah, yeah. With the description you painted. Oh, all right. Just a positive moment. Just me doing what I love to do. I ain't gonna lie. Just me. I listen when I even when I was doing what I what I was doing when I was going through stuff. I used to like write little. When I was only be like 13, 14, I used to write little raps in my little my note. What's the notepad book? Yep. <laughs> Black and white composition. And I, I I was supposed to use it for schoolwork. I'm using it for what I want to do, you know what I'm saying? I'm writing rhymes in there, so. And I used to just play little beats on the radio. And this back, you know, back then we had the radio, so we had to just hit the CD player, play it at a certain time so you could catch it. In. So, and I used to just, rec I, ain't, I record myself off a cell phone. And I just to hear, hear my, just to hear my sound, you know what I mean? Just to hear how I sound, use different tones. And I ain't gonna lie, that just, that was just, for me, that was something I like to do. So that, I guess you could say that was just, that sparked me because it, it showed it, a creative side of me. I never knew I could do, you know what I mean? Like I had a feeling I could do it, but I never gave it a try till then. So it's just like you know what, I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna go through with this. Now, is that the age music started for you? Yeah. Okay, that was. Yeah. Now, in regards to school, uh, you you uh, you told us about the summer school stuff. So yeah. so we we kind of know what was going on there. Yeah. And you were one foot in, one foot out. But yeah. what kind of kid were you in class? How would you describe yourself overall speaking? A, cl <laughs> a clown, class fucking clown. No, I mean, I, I was chilling. I was just a funny dude, you know what I mean? I like to play around a lot. That's it. I mean, I wasn't too, I wasn't, I wasn't acting fool, you know what I mean? I just kept playing around. That's about it, though. Sometimes class clowns, though, it's just jokes. It's just being funny. Yeah. Other times, it can lead to bullying. They become bullies. Oh, no, you're trying to get me. No, I'm messing with you, bro. Uh, no, I was no, I ain't bullying. You weren't. You, nah, you didn't <laughs> nah, I wasn't on. No, nah, I wasn't on bully. Like if we always play. I, I just, you know, what I mean, play with everybody. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bully nobody. I'm one of them dudes. You couldn't even bully nobody in front of me because I wouldn't even feel right. You know, what I mean, it made me feel uncomfortable. Now, coming from the struggle and you know poverty and that sort of thing, yeah. was being a class clown for you back then like a defense mechanism type of thing? Uh. Nah, I, nah, it was just me. I'm a natural silly guy, you know what I mean? That's just how I, that's just how it was, you know what I'm okay. saying? So it wasn't nothing, I wasn't nothing intentionally, you know what I mean? It was just, sometimes it was just how I was, and I didn't mean nothing by it, but it's just me, you know what I'm saying? I see. Yeah. Were you part of a certain clique or crowd while you were in school? Yeah. I played sports. You were a jock. You were an athlete. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I played sports, played football and basketball, so it's like I pretty much was cool with everybody, but I had my certain crowd, you know what I mean? It, the people like where like went to a, I went to uh, Henri Universal High School in South Philly, 31st and Saskatchewan, a project. So, like I was, I was, I was, I was with the people that was from around my area. You know what I mean? It's different areas. Like I said, we go by blocks. Like that was on 31st Street. I was with people from 20th to 23rd Street. The other than people on 31st Street, 28th Street, 30th Street. And I mean, it's a lot of people from different areas. 23rd Street. It's a lot of different projects that's going on at school and different, you know what I mean? So I was just with the people that I grew up with, you know what I mean, basically, so. I see. Uh, I want to talk about the sports in a second, but as far as music, yeah. did you ever take music in school? Did you ever join the band? Oh, uh, no, nah, I wasn't on that type time. No, nah, I don't want to that shit. I don't got time for that. You know what I did love, though? I used to love hearing people sing, though, like, and it's like the choir, just like, well, whatever Chorus. they do. Yeah, I, I love hearing sounds, but I didn't want to be in the, uh, that wasn't me, you know what I mean? That wasn't my style. So no band, no chorus for you? Oh, no, that wasn't me. Were you the type of kid that was freestyling or battling other classmates? Yeah, I would, yeah. Every now and then, I would play around, just do it in school and just teach it. Listen, let me tell you this crazy ass story. Look, high school, that's when I moved up to Chester. Uh, listen, I played for the uh, basketball team. At junior varsity team, Chester High. And then I used to I, I used to go to my crib. We used to all just make songs in the basement. Man, we recorded this video, man. Tom, I'm just talking about the whole basketball team, man. Got back to the coach. <laughs> we losing by halftime by the next game. Oh my God. He talking about some bustle fucking rob now. <laughs> yeah, he grinded me up for that. But it was times like that, you know what I mean? But yeah. <laughs> were you crazy good? Shit. Were you any good with the freestyling stuff, the battling other classmates stuff? Yeah, like I mean, to, depend what type of mood I'm in. You know, what I mean, nine times out of ten, when I'm in class, you know, like I said, I used to be, I used to be up, so it's just, you know, what I mean, it'd be natural for me. You in a mood to kick something right now? Ah, uh, 
Right on the spot. Right on the spot. You put me on the spot, so I got to do it. All right, I got you. Ah. Mm. Say, like, you call me on the bad time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you call, me on the, you call me on the crunch time. I caught you know? on the crunch time, sure. Um, what about talent shows? Did you ever participate in talent shows back then? Talent shows? Yeah, that's crazy. I did. Yeah, I definitely did. Original music or? Nah, it was old school. I used to go to like a, a, a middle school that was like a, a performing arts school. Okay. Middle school. Yeah. How'd you place? Uh, I mean, we they, they did plays and shit, so I, I participated in them when I was younger. No, but a talent show, you know when they have like... Oh, yeah, I did the talent shows too. Yeah, I did the talent shows too. Yeah, I definitely did the talent shows, but I don't remember that shit. Like, I, I, was, I remember I was in them, but... So fucking long ago, I was in middle school. Back then, and again, we'll talk about the sports stuff in a second, but back then, while you were doing music in school, did you ever have a song or a single you were promoting back then? Uh, back then in yeah. school? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did the, my first uh, my first uh, time recording with the Dreams and Nightmares. I, did, I freestyled on that. Okay. Yeah. So that was my first thing, and I, and I got end up, I didn't even bring it through school. I didn't, at the time, I didn't, know people, I didn't want people to know I rap. I, mean, I still played ball, and I did, I did that on my own time. But I finally did record it and I just put it out on YouTube and I didn't tell nobody. Next thing you know, I hear people listen to it throughout the school. That shit was crazy. It ended up it ended up getting popular? Yeah, it ended up, yeah, throughout the school. I said that shit crazy. And speaking of Meek Mill, because you mentioned him at the beginning of the segment and then you just mentioned you had uh, freestyled or remixed one of his songs yeah, yeah. back then. Have you ever had a chance to meet him? Meek? Ah, oh, it's crazy. He used to pull up on a, uh, on my block all the time on Opal Street. Riding a dirt bike, riding his little tricycle. He say what's up, you know what I mean? We, he always showed love, you know what I mean? Every time he came around, I seen he was chilling, you know what I mean? But I ain't never like, never a personal encounter, you know what I mean? But he just, one of them things, like he see he see me sitting on the step and then what's up, what's up? And like, straight like that. You know I, mean? I see. Just curious. Now, um, when it came to sports, you did, you did basketball and football. Sounds like you were a little bit better with the basketball stuff. I was, and the crazy thing is, I was better in football. Everybody Something. told me I was better in football, but I just love basketball more because I ain't had to fucking go out there in that fucking heat with okay. the pads on and all that crazy shit. But I mean, I was actually, I ain't gonna lie to you, I was better in football. You were on varsity for both sports? Yeah, I was on varsity for, yeah, for both. I was on varsity for football since, you know, since sophomore and then varsity for basketball, uh, junior and uh, varsity. Okay. I'm a junior and, uh, Senior year, I'm sorry. When it came to basketball, what position did you play? Point. What jersey number? My, what jersey number I had? I had uh, 12, and I had, uh, yeah, 12. It was 12. Was there a reason for that number or no? Yeah, it was a reason for that number. Uh, my homie brother died. His name was Sean Anderson. You know what I mean? He, he played for Roxborough High School. In, uh, where is that at? It was Roxborough, uh, Pens uh, Philadelphia. But, uh, yeah, his brother died. You know what I mean? We kind of like, uh, kind of grew up together. So I got that number out of him. You know what I mean? Just to support. And when it came to football, what position did you play? I played running back and I played uh, corner. And what jersey number did you have there? Uh, I had a couple different numbers. What number I had the most probably was either uh, three or three or, uh, I think three or 22. 22 in high school, three or 22. Any reasonings behind those numbers? No, I was just, a con half of the time was just the number I just picked up and grabbed. You know what I mean? I was like, fuck it, just give me that number. Now, you mentioned earlier in this segment that you, you ended up uh, graduating high school and you do attend college. With the sports, were you good enough to get some sort of scholarship with the sports stuff? High school I was. I'm mean, going towards from like middle school to high school. I was going to, yeah, I got a scholarship to uh, West Catholic, but they wasn't paying for it enough. So my mom, I told you my mom was three kids, you know what I mean? She couldn't afford to send one school, one kid to Catholic school, the rest of them go to public school, you know what I mean? She still got to put food in all of our mouths and pay rent. Be realistic. I wouldn't even put my mom through that. So I mean, I know what was going on at the time. So I just chose the route to go to a different school. You know what I mean? I see. Yeah. When you do leave uh, high school and you mm -hmm. go to college, uh, what college do you go to? I went to community, man. I, mean, I was trying to go. I was trying to go to New York, but you know, out of state tuition, crazy. So it didn't work out. They wanted too much again. So I was like, what the fuck? We just trying to get ourselves together. So I don't know. I damn sure ain't wanted to even co-signing with that or just you know what I'm saying. So I was just like. All right, I'm gonna just go to community. I ended up going to community. Couple classes, man, I said, fuck this shit. What community college was it that you attended? Uh, Delaware County. 
Delaware County Community College. And was there any scholarship for that? Yeah, it was, but I just I ain't no fucking scholarship for that. Not for no sports and all that. By the time of high school and everything with the sports, I was fading off with it, you know what I'm saying? By the time uh, senior year, I was just like, man, fuck this shit. I'm going to do music. You know what I mean? Uh, I see. Actually, junior year, I said I quit the uh, varsity team. said I want to do music. The coach snapped on me and all that. I'm just like, fuck that shit. I want to do what I want to do. I've been wanting to do it, so why not? You know what I'm saying? So when you start community college, though, uh, yeah. how did you afford it financially? College? Yeah. Uh, you know, going through you know, financial aid. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then you end up dropping out. What was your uh, parents' reaction to that? <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> but, I mean, like, she, I mean, but she, I, I feel like we both knew that the college thing wasn't going to go as far as we thought because, you know what I mean, I, at, 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 that t at that point in time, I didn't know what I exactly wanted to go for. You know what I mean? I just, I just wanted to go just to, just to be there, you know what I mean? But now I'm just in the music shit. I, I kind of want to go back for as far as business, you know what I mean? Learning my own management, different shit. And I, now I know where I needed at. It's just like, all right, now I know what I can go for and I'm going to live up to it now. Hindsight 2020, though, yeah. looking back, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you regret that decision at all to, uh, to stop yeah, the college yeah, thing? Hell yeah, time? hell yeah, because I could have been on, the to on top of the shit. Um, I would have been graduated. 2018 would have been my graduating year. I would have been graduated by now. And that's what we're doing four years, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? I, I held myself back, but I'm going to go back, you know what I mean? But in due time, you know what I mean? I ain't going to rush it. When it's, when it's the right time for me, that's when I'll be there. Now, in regards to your family, uh, you mentioned you had some siblings. Yeah. Where do you fit on the ladder there? I'm middle child. Middle child. <laughs> yeah, I'm the middle child. I got a little brother. I got two little brothers. I got uh, one older sister, one younger sister. Is that a hard or sweet position to be in? I mean, I, it's just that you get to see both sides, I guess. Like, you get to see how my, how my little brother was raised and kind of how... My sister raised me, and then I seen how she was, you know what I mean, kind of raised. So it's just like, you get to see kind of both sides. So I guess it's dope, because you get to, to see the birth of a new child, and then see how your older sister is. I don't know, I mean, I guess it is, it is what it is, you know what I mean? It wasn't really no effect on me, I just, I just took it how it came, bro. Any advice to somebody watching this, and they're the middle child on the ladder? Keep grinding. I mean, whatever you like to do, do it out there. Never stop striving. Anyone else do music in your family aside yourself? My uncle used to do music. Uh, that's about it. My uncle used to do music. That like what really influenced me. Part of that shit is just I ain't gonna lie. My father used to play a lot. My father and my uncle used to play a lot of a certain type of music in the car, and I used to be like, all right, I know what type of shit I like now. You know what I mean? He used to play, and I think he did it on purpose to see if I to see what type of kid I was, to see what I had an ear for certain shit. And but he, it kind of he he knew I had an ear for it, so it was just like, yeah, I know what's good and what's not good. It was the hot music, so he kind of drew me on that type of time. You know what I'm saying? It was rap music? Rap music. Yeah, it was definitely rap. I ain't listening to no other shit at that time. And this uncle was on your dad's side? No, my uncle was on my mom's side. Oh. Yeah. Uh, have you collaborated with him at all? Nah, nah, he ain't on that. He, he's rap back in the day. I ain't, ain't doing that. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. What does your family think about your music career choice at this point? They see, they see the growth. They see the growth. They see me from just doing it in high school, saying I'm gonna just quit basketball. Got just I could snap doing it. like the fuck you mean? That's a hobby. That's not no real thing to do. I said just like that. I was trying to explain it, just like sports, and I was like nah. She's like that's not you can do that anytime. That's not that's a fucking hobby. But now she understands it. You know what I'm saying? She really she seen where I came from 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 that conversation to where we at now. It's just like oh right, I see you doing videos. I see you doing a lot. Of, Going to shows, you know what I mean? Open up for major artists, NBA money, money bag, you know what I mean? And I mean, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff changed, like, you know what I mean? So she understanding now versus then when I couldn't, I couldn't really do what I wanted to, you know what I'm saying? Parents supportive? At first, nah, they was just like kind of, they supported, they knew I did it, but they was just like, I ain't with it, I ain't with it yet. But now they see, they see I'm all for it, they see I'm putting my all into it, they respect it now, you know what I mean? So now they, they all for it now, you know what I mean? Come to shows and everything. Now, it's one thing for parents to support what their child does. Right. It's another for them to like what their child does. Yeah. Do they like the music? Yeah. Certain songs. Certain songs. You know what I mean? I, certain songs I talk crazy and certain songs she can relate because I know how to tell a story. You know what I'm saying? So I know how to put certain shit together. So 
Now they not only can they ain't gonna say they all, everybody can relate, but she'll understand it. You know what I mean? They're like you know what well, I can listen to that versus then me just comment on a song saying oh, I'm saying if I didn't fuck up, it. she ain't want to hear that shit. She want to hear something she can like oh why right. think what, about it. You know what I mean? What do they think about the cussing? I mean they know it's part of music, but I know for myself I need to stop it sometimes. You know what I mean? Cause I wanna I wanna grow. You know what I mean? I mean, we we all we all we all fall victim of it sometimes. You know what I mean? But be human. But at a certain point, I want to grow and use less of it. Basically, have they ever had a chance to see you perform live? Yeah, my mom came to my show, opened up for Money Bag. Is it a different feeling? She ain't even she ain't even say she was going there. She popped up there. Oh, that's love. So, how did you find out she was there? I seen her. <laughs> you saw her while you were performing? Yeah, I seen oh. her while I was performing. And are you, does that catch you off guard? No, I, I mean, when I seen her, I smiled a little bit. You know what I mean? I was like, all right. Yeah, that's, I mean, I didn't even have to ask her. She, she knew I had a show. She didn't even say nothing to me about it. She just popped up there. And I mean, her and my sister. And I said, that's love. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't got that type of support, even from their family to come out to see a man to come. And she didn't, she spent her money. To come see that show, like I said, she didn't even she. I didn't think she was going. I mean, she spent her own money to come see. So now you see your mom there. Yeah. Do you end up getting nervous at all? Nah. I mean, I mean, you got a little stage fright, but once you on that stage, it's like you on there. You know what I mean? You got to loosen up regardless. You can go up there and freeze up if you want, but you got to loosen up regardless. You know what I mean? You see your mom there. Does it ever get awkward while you're on stage? Nah. I told her at this point, I made her respect to what I'm doing and anything I'm saying. In, I hope, like, I hope she don't take offense, like, I mean, take offense to it, but, you know what I mean? It's a part of my lifestyle and it's a part of what's going on. Best advice your mother or father's given you at this point? Keep pushing and go back to school. She want me to go back to school, so I'm going to go back. When the time's right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to do that for my mom. I'm going to do that for my mom. I'm going to do that for my family, period. But just keep working, keep striving. Don't let up. Go back to school. Graduate for her. I got her.